Hey students, wanted to touch base with you on this Friday to see how you're doing. Man, we miss seeing all of you and wanted to encourage you. I know this has been different for many of us for a couple of weeks. And right now we're filming outside because it's good to be outside instead of cooped up in the house. Uh, but I want to talk to you about something. First of all, your daily routine. Your daily routine says a lot about kind of life right now for you. So many of you, I'm sure it's probably waking up, maybe not as early as you used to wake up because you can sleep in a little bit doing school online, but you wake up a little bit later, maybe you check social media, see which friends sent you a DM. Maybe you also hit up uh, TikTok, see who shot out a, a, a funny music video um, maybe you hit up Instagram. You have all of these ways to kind of still stay connected with people, even though that we are kind of in our own places at home. But one thing that you can avoid in your daily routine is obviously school. You want to make sure you have everything you need to get your schoolwork done for that day. And you're checking your student apps and making sure you're on the right Zoom calls. But another thing you can't avoid is the news. And you can't avoid hearing about the health pandemic. No matter where you look, no matter if you're on social media, you turn on the TV, it is everywhere. And real quick today, I wanna to talk to you about the danger of that. The danger of that is our hearts and minds can get caught meditating on the crisis. Now, specifically in this situation, it would be the health pandemic, but really all throughout life, whenever there's a crisis or difficulty in your life, the natural response is, is to think about the what if, to think about what if this happens or if this takes place and that breeds well, fear. That breeds a fear of the unknown, a fear of what if this happens. So how do we deal with that fear? How do we fight against that? Because it is kind of built into our natural response. And when we begin to meditate on problems our problems do what they grow and then our view of God whatever your view of God may be if you're a follower of Jesus you have a certain view of a, a redeemer a heavenly father that's with you um, at all times and if you're not a follower and you're trying to figure out God your views can change about him through all of this but when your problems become big and you focus on them your view of God becomes it becomes smaller and we kind of lose sight of what really matters. Well, we've been looking at the life of David through a few of these devotionals, and I wanna read from Psalm 27 and verse four, and hopefully give you a quick tool that you can use against fear. Psalm 27 verse four, David's going through a really difficult time, but look what he says. One thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after. Here it is, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to inquire in his temple. So David is saying my situation that I'm going through is not going to change and I really don't have a lot of control over it. But the one thing I do have control is what perspective I view my situation from. I can view it from a human perspective. I could focus on the problems and the difficulties. Or he said, I wanna see it from God's point of view. I want to view it from the house of the Lord, Jesus my Redeemer, and see His perspective on this crisis, on this situation. So if we're to do that, one of the best ways we can do that and the best tool against fighting against fear that you may be facing is gratitude, right? I know we're not around Thanksgiving and November and talking about being thankful, but did you know that gratitude is one of the best tools to fight against fear, fight against anxiety, to fight against the unknown or the what if? So two things real quick today. Here's what I would encourage you to be thankful for. The first one is this. I wanna encourage you to look vertically, to look to God and look at all the things that God has blessed you with, to focus on His goodness, His holiness, his power, even his faithfulness. I mean, you think about the sun coming up every morning, and I'm sure many of you have been up for sunrise, 
here lately? Probably not. But did you know the sun always comes up in the morning? There's never a day it hasn't. And the Bible even says that is a picture of God's faithfulness to us. So the, the fact that the sun's up in the morning, you can be thankful for that. And you can turn your focus from fear and what if to thankfulness of God, thank you for being good to me. God, thank you for saving me from my sin. Thank you for the sun coming up every morning. So I wanna encourage you to look vertically. But then once you do that, I wanna encourage you to look horizontally. Because when we begin to be thankful for things that we have in our life, it tears apart that fear. And I'm sure many of you have probably spent time with your family more often in the past two weeks than you probably have in the past year. And you may have been cooped up with them in the house or maybe you've taken long walks or long bike rides. Man, what an awesome blessing is that? Something that we have never experienced in our lifetime, the fact that we have this time to spend with family and those that we love and that we care about. Be thankful for that. I know it comes with some difficulties of you probably getting on each other's nerves and maybe you wanna strangle one of your siblings, but what a thankful um, heart we can have towards the fact that we have time with family, that you have access to food, um, that you have good health, that you have a house that you can live in and uh, a place that you can stay, that you have technology to keep in contact with people and to FaceTime and to text and to call that you can continue school, and the list goes on and on and on. Hey, if you're battling with fear right now, fight it with gratitude. Look for things that you can be thankful for. This is not denying the reality that we're in, but it is turning your heart's attention away from things that are gonna pull you down and make your problems seem big, and focus them I'm being thankful for God, being thankful for the things that you've been given. I'm reminded of a song I remember singing when I was a little kid, sang it for many years. It was in a hymn book at my church. It was called, Count Your Blessings. Count Your Blessings. And it was actually written in 1897 by a guy named Johnson Oatman Jr. And if you read his story, he says the reason he wrote this song is because many people were taking for granted their families, taking for granted the blessings that God had given them. And he wrote this song to remind them daily to stop and count your blessings. In fact, the song says, count your blessings, name them one by one, count your many blessings and see what God has done. Second Thessalonians, actually 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says this, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hey students, what do you gotta do today if you're battling fear, if you're battling the unknown and the what if and your mind is consumed with all of that? Count your blessings. Man, take a piece of paper out. Write down the things that God has done for you. Write down the family that he has placed in your life. Write down the little blessings of being able to, to run to the store and get some food that you need. Count your blessings and see what God has done in your life. So I hope that encourages you. Hey, if you're watching this right now, uh, maybe you're watching on YouTube or Instagram, tonight at eight o'clock, uh, our leaders got together. We did some fun stuff. We pulled off some crazy, at home trick shots that uh, we're going to challenge you to try to do but i want you to tune in tonight at eight on our youtube channel trinity students and check out the trip sh trick shots that we uh, attempted and they were a lot of fun and it'll be a good time for us to get together and have some fun so we love you god bless you peace